Okay, this video is about Voltaire. He's villain and academic hero number 16. Voltaire lived from 1694 to 1778. He was educated in France by the Catholic Jesuits. And the Jesuits at that time, you know, were very interested in education and they had developed the university system in France. They dominated education in France actually until about 1761. And then Madame Pompadour helped to get them thrown out of France and Voltaire contributed to getting them kicked out of France, which I don't like in the sense that he sort of, you know, they had helped educate him and that was how he paid them back. For a while, the Jesuits were succeeded by the Jansenists who were sort of seen as closet Calvinists. So anyways, Getting back to Voltaire, you know, Will Durant considered him the greatest writer who ever lived. And Voltaire, he did a lot of good things. He was very funny, but he also did some very bad things. And that's why I label him as both a hero and a villain. Um, you know, around that time, Montesquieu had written a book called Persian Letters with a pseudonym. And this gave the idea to Voltaire to write a book called English Letters when he was exiled to England after he'd gotten into an argument with an aristocrat. And for this book, English Letters, he compared France to England. And um, the, these two books, Persian Letters and um, English Letters, were the two big books of the so-called Enlightenment. Um, Will Durant commented on this. Will Durant, uh, the historian, he's an American historian. He lived from 1885 to 1981, and he wrote massive uh, historical volumes, pretty much of almost all the major history of the world. Um, and in particular, he loved Voltaire, and his history of France was largely an autobiography of all the events in France revolving around the life of Voltaire. It's actually a good book. I enjoyed it. Um, and uh, here's what Volt, uh, Will Durant has to say about Voltaire. Voltaire is the most brilliant writer who ever lived. Things came to him dull, and he made them radiant. Things came to him obscure, and he made them clear. Things came to him in useless scholastic dress, and he clothed them in such language that the whole world could understand and profit from them. Never did one man teach so many or with such irresistible artistry. Okay, so, you know, Voltaire is funny. Here's it's probably his most famous book that most people are aware of is Candide. And here's like a typical quote from Candide. All that love has ever brought me is 20 kicks in the ass. Um, Voltaire, you know, one of the greatest writers who ever lived, had some advice about writing. One should always aim at being interesting rather than exact. Exaggeration is the inseparable companion of greatness. My motto is to the point. All styles are good except the boring kind. It is not enough to see and to know the beauty of a work. We must feel and be affected by it. Voltaire. So those are all great quotes and obviously you see that when you got a great scientist for example instead of writing their paper with all the usual boring statistics they put it in a story form, in a narrative form. It makes it a lot more entertaining. They compare and contrast things. Okay, most of the big statistical hyped up papers are all bogus. Uh, more quotes by Voltaire. Woe to the author determined to teach. The best way to be boring is to leave nothing out. The secret of a bore, of being a bore, is to tell everything. Okay, continuing with Voltaire quotes. Um, by the way, Voltaire defended freedom of speech. He defended people who had been mistreated. He did a lot of good things, too, on an individual basis. However, on an overall cultural basis, he did some real bad things. Okay, so here he is on an individual basis. The right to free speech is more important than the content of the speech. I do not agree with the words that you say, but I will defend to death your right to say them. The true character of liberty, liberty is independence maintained by force. Voltaire continues, Our wretched species is so made that those who walk on the well-trodden path always throw stones at those who are showing a new road. It is better to risk saving a guilty man than to risk condemning an innocent one. Love truth but pardon error. Okay, so that was brave and good of Voltaire, all that type of stuff. And I like what he says next, Great men have been formed either before academies or independent of them. And sort of the meaning of that, I see, is that somebody who becomes great at something, they got something on their own efforts or their own work outside of some formal university or something. Almost never does universities just teach old-fashioned stuff that's mostly out of date. When an individual really develops things, they did something outside that academy or university. 
Okay, Voltaire continues. It is dangerous to be right when the established are wrong. To announce truths is an infallible method for being persecuted. I am very fond of the truth, but not at all fond of martyrdom. To learn who rules you, simply find out who you are not allowed to criticize. To succeed in chaining the multitude, you must seem to wear the same fetters. Those who can make you believe absurdities can make you commit atrocities. Voltaire. Okay, Voltaire continues. Cultivate your own garden. That's from Candide. So basically, the whole world was a mess in the book Candide, but he says, just do the best you can where you're at with the people around you to make things good and be nice. And, you know, that's pretty good advice. My father used to say that to me. Uh, Voltaire continues, the more often a stupidity is repeated, the more it gets the appearance of wisdom. Yeah, and that's sad, because like we talked about humans being like herd animals, you could tell the average person anything, and they believe it. It doesn't even matter what it is, as long as it seems to be the popular opinion. Again, a herbivore mentality going with herbivore physiology. You know, to think clearly takes effort. To think as an individual takes effort. I like what um, Thomas Shaws had said in the previous uh, recent lecture. He said, good, clear thinking requires courage more than anything else. You just have to trust yourself and make the effort. Okay, Voltaire continues. Common sense is not so common. Skepticism is the foundation of all wisdom. Perfect is the enemy of good. Think how difficult it is to change yourself, and you will realize how much more difficult it is to change someone else. It is difficult to free fools from the chains they love. Okay, that's a good one for teaching the vegan. All these fat sick people could be improved so much, but they're just fixed on their way, and they're not, they've given up trying to change or learn. It is difficult to free fools from the chains they love. About his writing career, Voltaire says, the only reward to be expected from literature is contempt if one fails and hatred if one succeeds. The art of medicine consists of amusing the patient while nature cures the disease. Okay, then after his trip to England, he was impressed very much by the science of Isaac Newton, and he sort of felt mankind should have more appreciation for scientists like Newton rather than for tyrants. Okay, so here's what Voltaire said. Who is the greatest man, Caesar, Alexander, or Cromwell? No, it is Newton. For Newton masters our minds by the force of truth, and for that we owe him reverence, not to those who enslave us by violence. Okay, and so basically, you know, he mentioned Cromwell. Cromwell was a jerk. He was a Puritan who passed draconian rules in England during the 1600s. He banned all the plays. He had strict censorship. He tore down Shakespeare's famous Globe Theater. He canceled Celebration of Christmas. He established a strict female dress code. Remember those Puritan dress codes and the, uh, the pilgrims and all that? He outlawed making pies. He was terrible to the Irish. Cromwell himself died in 1658. So, like I said, I got a love-hate relationship with Voltaire. I respect all the good things he did on an individual basis, and I studied a lot about him. But he paved the way for Robespierre, which led to, led to Napoleon. And he was much more critical of France than Socrates ever was of Athens. Voltaire, for example, used to criticize and mock all the cathedrals. And to me, I would wonder, how could anybody not like a cathedral? You know, a cathedral is like a symphony. It's magnificent. They're the most interesting buildings in the world. Um, if I could make a cathedral and have my own little statue, instead of me always being the, the plow horse, I'd like to be sitting in the carriage at the driver's seat with a big whip and have my wife and kids pull the darn thing, turn things around once for, for once. Voltaire loved to prattle on about how much better China and England were than France. Oh, by the way, I thought about making a medical cathedral. You know, for radiology, you could have a barium enema being performed. Um, you know, you can show open heart surgery being performed. That will scare people. And, um, well, I have some more jokes about that I put in one of my books, but I won't go any further with it. Okay, Voltaire loved to prattle on about how much better China and England were than France, but he kept on going back to live in France. 
Um, he was brilliant, but ultimately destructive. And he's called the father of the Enlightenment, but he should really also be called the father of the French Revolution. Uh, Voltaire and the Philosophes helped to banish religion from France, but they had nothing to replace it with. And this led to Robespierre, which then led to Napoleon and the loss of more lives from France than ever in the history of France, and also the weakening of France. Um, after Napoleon had overextended himself in Russia and then at Waterloo, France was really diminished in its uh, power and status in Europe. Um, the other Philosophes like Diderot, Helvetius, uh, Helvetius uh, Lemaitre, Rousseau, Robespierre, they were a bunch of atheists who tried to de-Christianize France and um, they, you know, they wrote the Encyclopedia, the Philosophique, and that was sort of the precursor later on to the English Encyclopedia Britannica. Um, they sort of, you know, like I said, crushed out the Jesuits. And here's a quote from Will Durham. The philosophes do not need religion, but the average man wants it. Religion tells the average man that his life is meaningful. The, athe the atheism of the, philosoph of the philosophers, it leads to despair for the average man. With atheism, the average man is just a farm animal owned by the ruler. Okay, with religion, he's at least somebody in that, somewhere in the cosmic, cosmic scheme of things. So why did the philosophers hate the church so much? Uh, they saw it as stuck in the Middle Ages, primitive, connected to monarchy and despotism. And Voltaire did do some good things. He protected some people that were unfairly being persecuted. Um, and what, Volta what Durant says about it, Will Durant, he says, the philosophes wanted to keep Christian morality but get rid of Christian theology. The problem is that it's best to teach morality to the young, and you can't teach morality to the young without theology. Um, an intellectual person can develop their own sort of system of values and guide themselves to behave politely and kindly. But average people can't do that. They can't think up this whole system. They're just not able to do it. History has shown that. And when you remove a cultural code of behavior or religion from the people, they often act like barbarians and are very cruel and violent. And this is what was the case in France in the 1790s, Russia and Germany in the 1900s. It's unfortunately all too common. Um, rulers don't like a religion because it, you know, it cuts into their power. They want to essentially be gods, which they are when there's no religion in their country. And, you know, just an example of how a lot of other people felt about Voltaire. Mozart absolutely hated Voltaire. When Voltaire died, Mozart said, the ungodly villain Voltaire has died miserably, just like a beast. That is his reward. Um... The other thing is, you know, the Dunning-Kruger effect indicates how smart people overestimate the abilities of average people. So for the philosophes, you know, fine. Like I said, they got their own philosophical system of values and right and wrong, but the average person is not going to see it the same way. Later on, Voltaire came to believe it was necessary to have the concept of heaven and hell so that people could be more motivated to be nice to each other. And Voltaire said, a, philosoph a philosopher can live without heaven and hell, but most people are not philosophers. Voltaire came to see that hell motivated people to behave better. Voltaire said, if God did not exist, we would have to invent him. And Voltaire said, I want my doctor and my tailor to believe in God so they don't rob me. Yeah, it's good that they have some type of value system that is going to motivate them to do the right thing rather than the money thing. Uh, anyways, hope that was interesting. <laughs>